Why did you get suddenly so popular stroke infamous, do you think? I exploded. Uh, I certainly didn't do that with magic. I've been on the internet for a very long time. I think in the world we live in now, as the other side, the other side, the people who disagree with me, as they get more and more tyrannical in their censorships and their hate mobs, etc., as standard masculine practices are deemed toxic, I didn't put a magic spell on everybody. I managed to uh, accumulate a large amount of affinity with the male populace across the Western world because I'm simply saying things that many men believe, think, and feel. I understand that on the face of some of the long format content I've made, if you're going to take a few seconds out of hours, chop it up, put it all over social media, accompanied with my massive fame, then things can absolutely not be been taken out of context. I do not hate women in any regard. I have no negative relationship with women. No women have come forward saying I've hurt them. I have no criminal record for hurting women. There's no way I can be seen as the face or the devil in regards to how men treat women on, on, on the planet. I'm absolutely not the opposite. I believe in protecting and providing. I've been misunderstood. There's been large contingents of people who have tried very hard to purport lies about me. And, and the, the truth of the matter is I've, I've been producing content for a very long time. Hours and hours of videos been cut down to two or three seconds of clip. Those clips have gone viral and people misunderstand me. But I, have you ever been in love? Yeah. How many times? Uh, uh, plenty. I believe in love between men and women. I'm a I real love, you know. Where yeah. it's, how, I believe, how many times would you say? I, I, enough. I believe men and women are a beautiful union. I think we're slightly different, but when we work together, we're the most powerful force in the world. But how many women have you loved? I don't know, Piers. A few. Give me a bullpark. Five, ten, twenty? Let's, let's say... You don't forget how many people you've been in love with. Let's on. say ten. I mean, I've been in love, and I certainly believe that men and women, when they work together, it's the most beautiful force on the planet. I believe in family. I believe in children. I believe in... If you believe in family and children and love, yeah. why are you single? I'm not single. Well, you're not married. That's what I mean. Well, if I was married, the last thing I would do is advertise it to the feral psychopaths on the internet. So I'm not a feral psychopath. Well, like, you called me be, friend earlier. Can be debated, Piers. But the point I'm <laughs> the point. But the point I'm making as a whole is that all of these. Do you want to get married? Is my point. No, but let's let's please for a you second. You don't, or you do. Let's please for a second because you've interrupted me so many times. I've failed. To well, actually, I've only interrupted answer. you just to be clear when you've actually answered a different question. Cool. Well, then on all these points, you're and making, you've admitted that on all these points you're making on repeat, you're making you're taking these sentences and on repeat you're using them to we you're weaponizing them against me. I'm not weaponizing anything. Okay, it's fine. No, no. The you're point... weaponizing the weaponizing. Which no doesn't problem. exist. No problem. But you the... said to me, "Come on, bring it on. Read out all the things that you think are blatant misogyny." All I've done is literally read out all the things we identified from all the research that I thought were blatantly misogynist Understood. and given you the chance to respond. And the only time I've interrupted you is when you've tried to answer a completely different question. Understood, Pierce. The, but these things were said in large context where often I'm talking about how, for example, on the same podcast where you've read one of them sentences from, I was talking about how it's a man's duty to die by a woman. And the guy asked me, he said, if 10, me if 10 men with knives attacked your woman, wouldn't you just... I said, yeah, I'd stand and die. I'd never just run away because I have a duty as a man. I must, I must die on the spot to protect her honor and my honor. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about a man having responsibility to his duties. I'm talking about the old traditional ways of masculinity. And what happens is a few sentences from such a long conversation is taken and used against me. I understand that. So, the, so I want you to understand that I'm talking about protecting and providing for women. I'm talking about yeah. a man making sure Do you sure want to get married? No, but this is, we have to, we has all feed into each other, Piers. I'm talking about protecting. That's not a hard question. No, but I'm talking about protecting and providing for a woman. I'm talking about a man being responsible for her safety. I understand. So, of course, I believe in men and women. Of course, I believe in love. Of course, I believe in marriage. Of course, I believe in family. No, but none the of that idea that I don't believe in, <laughs> Andrew, the idea that I don't believe in these things is crazy. I didn't ask you if you believed in it. I asked you if you're going to get married. One day, absolutely. You'd like to. If I'm not married already, I would, I will be married one day. If I'm not. Well, you, you might be secretly married. I, I could be married, correct. Why would you not tell me either way? Why would I advertise to the feral psychopaths of the world who have tried their very best to destroy me for an opinion about my private life and the things that are most sacred to me? Why well, you would think I do if that? you said you were married, everyone would hate you? I don't, but people hate me. It's about me understanding that I'm a hard target, but I am very, very protective of the people I care about. Right. But you believe in the concept of marriage. Completely. That's what we were talking about the whole time. What do you think? I we mean, talked about a man giving a woman away. Okay. I believe in marriage more than anybody. In fact, my... I believe in marriage. In, no, please. Okay. I believe in marriage in the traditional sense. I believe a man has a duty to stand up and be a real man. I believe that the problem with the world today that we are facing is that not enough men are sticking to the age-old ways of masculinity. Mm -hmm. I believe that me standing up and saying a man must protect a woman and provide for her, so he needs to make sure that she's safe. He needs a degree of authority to I protect her. I have no her. problem with... No, but, no you, but people do have a problem with it. I'm, and that's I'm the, not... Sorry, and that's the world we're in now. And please don't interrupt me on this point. Social media has changed in modern times. 
YouTube five years ago was five, six, seven, eight minute long videos. Mm. Now we have TikTok, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, 20 seconds, YouTube shorts, Instagram stories. Now anything you produce that's long form is cut down to very, very short form. They're interested in clicks. They're interested in engagement. They find so the most. Con- from they from They find that. the most controversial clips they can and Andrew, on purpose. You benefited from all that. Everybody benefits from social media views, your, as do you. Your, was it the Hustler? What is it I called? had an online school. Called? Hustlers University. Right. And their whole job was to promote your clips. Make ha- you rich and famous. So you've benefited from this system, the one you now profess to hate. You benefited from I all never that. said I hated you it. You clip baited like the best of them. I never said I hated it. I'm saying what happened. I don't hate it. I don't hate social media. I think it's a very powerful force. I don't hate the social media. I'm saying the that. The point is, I think you can talk, look, you can talk to girlfriends of yours, um, maybe a secret wife, I don't know. It's entirely up or to two. You. Or two. You, maybe you've got 10 wives. That's your business. I don't care, right? My only thing is, I don't care what you do in private. If it's consensual between you and another woman, you can do what you like, right? It's your life. I believe in freedom and, and liberty. It's when you say it in public, it's the influence that this kind of thing has on young men. I agree. Right? And I speak with someone with three sons, right? It's who are, by the way, they're intrigued by you. They're fascinated, right? You're a, you're a big thing in that world of TikTok and so on. So they all are aware of you and what you say. So they're all looking. And when they see things like the machete thing, I get the context because I'm a 57-year-old guy who's been around the block a bit, and I can get what you've said, and you're responding to a particular scenario yep. which you'd created where but, a woman... But it hits. can be misunderstood. I understand. So my point to you is, given that you know it can be misunderstood, do you regret saying things like this on camera where it can be disseminated by less intelligent young males who think that is actually what they should be doing to women? And finally, we get to the point of the issue, which is the point I tried to make at the very beginning. When I made a video before I was famous that got 500 views, me being concerned that 1% of people will misunderstand it was not relevant. Where you start getting 5 million views a video, 50 million views a video, 1% of people misunderstanding it. doesn't change what becomes you... a, No, it doesn't. But it becomes a much larger problem. I understand. So with great fame That's true. comes great responsibility. Right. So... I agree. Would I... Now that I'm my... famous, yes. do I say things the same way as I did back before I was famous? Absolutely not. Right. As neither would you or nearly any other famous person on the planet. So my logical... Once you become famous, you have to be a lot more careful with how you say things. I understand. So my logical follow-up to that remains... Do you regret then saying it the way you said it? I can't live in regret by saying something before I was famous on a camera which barely anybody watched and then I became famous afterwards. That would be a very asinine way to view the world. Do you, I can't stand, live in, do you I, stand by all those things? I can't live in regret because I didn't know I was going to become the most famous man on the planet. That, 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 regret would be the wrong word. Is it, un, is it inconvenient? Sure. But I can't sit here and say, I wish I knew six years ago I'd be the most famous man on the planet and monitored all of my speech forever. That's asinine. Isn't fair. Sure. Do you identify as a feminist? I think that women and men are fantastic. Both of us are fantastic. I think women reproduce. I think women need to be respected, protected, provided for. I think that modern feminism ha- is kind of hard for me to even truly understand. What do you think it means? What is feminism? I think that the idea of feminism is that men and women are equal uh, under the law. And do you believe that? Completely. They we should are, be treated we, completely equally. Yeah, but we are equal under the law. Wouldn't you agree? Uh, not really. I think there are still some issues in the world where, I mean, certainly in workplace, the gender pay gap remains. Uh, they're not treated equally in most cases, women. Well, that can be discussed, the gender pay gap. I think that's already been discussed at length. I think that there's actually... You think women should go to work? I think women should work completely. You do? Why wouldn't they? Because in the parts of the country, that, of the world you were mentioning earlier, that have different views no. of women, they don't go to work. In the parts of the world that person from the podcast was from, for the point I made... Yeah, they didn't. But I don't live in those parts of the world. I think women should be free to work if they choose. I think it's very important that uh, the family unit remains. I do believe that the most, in my personal view, the most important and respectful thing a woman can do is become a mother. I think that having children is a beautiful thing. Uh, But obviously, if a woman wants to work and wants to have a career, especially now with paternity leave or maternity leave, and she can manage to do both, why wouldn't I want women to work? I don't know why anyone would ever assume I don't want women to work or think women can't work because I said that I should keep them safe sometimes. Good. <laughs> it, no, but it's interesting because you have to look at this, Piers. It's interesting how people extrapolate. Andrew said that women that he's responsible for a woman's safety, and he said that that gives him authority to make decisions for her safety, and that's been misconstrued, and he's a bad person. He believes that women are property. So, but now we believe that Andrew doesn't believe in love. Andrew doesn't believe women should work. Andrew... I don't know where all of that comes from. Well, that's why I'm glad we've had a chance to discuss it. Completely. I believe women are sovereign individuals and they can make any choice they so desire. I think that it's important that we remember that 
a man has a duty. I think I certainly in my relationship have a financial responsibility to provide for my woman. My woman would never have to work unless she wanted to because I'm the kind of person who works hard enough that should she wouldn't young have men, to. Should young men, though, all aspire to be like you? Should young men aspire to work very hard, have no criminal record, become multimillionaires, protect and provide for the women close to them, uh, be sovereign so they can stand up and have their own points of view in face of cancellation? be able to not be mentally intimidated when they go on national TV and there's traps set up for them. Yeah, I believe that confident, strong men who stand up and protect and provide for women are a good thing for the world and a good force for the world. And I don't think that I put a magic spell on anybody. I think there's a whole bunch of men in the world who understands my value. And if, if men grow up to be like me, you're going to have a whole bunch of people with no criminal record, dedicated athletes, who protect and provide for the people close to them, are fantastic for the economy. I'll make another point. Another point here that's very, very, that's very, that needs to be said. The number of women who have stood up and stuck up for me is ignored. Thousands of women are making videos saying, I've met Andrew Tate, he's such a nice guy. I wish I had a man like Andrew Tate who felt responsible to protect and provide for me. You know what? I, I do belong to my husband. That's why I married him and I love him. We ignore the thousands of women who stood up and, and, and stood by me and said everything I said is true. And we're taking a very vocal minority who have taken the things I've said and are pretending to be absolutely and utterly devastated by them okay. for some reason. All right. I mean, time out. Time out. Sure. I simply ask you this. What has come clear to me in the interview is that a lot of things you say you wouldn't say now that you've said before. Well, so I'd say them differently, perhaps. You, you, yeah, right. So to me, that's an acceptance, not just that you want to get back on platforms, because maybe that was one of the reasons you, you were no platform, but that you've recognised and understood the potential harm to the wrong kind of impressionable mind by some of the things you've said. Would that be fair? I think that's... 80% fair. I recognize and understand that with massive fame, you have to be more careful about being misconstrued. Like I said earlier, 1% of people misunderstanding you doesn't matter with a small audience. It matters with a very large audience. With power comes responsibility. Mm. I still believe the things I say. I do not want to be a negative force for the world. I also understand that I am a man who's lived a very difficult, nuanced life, and I am capable of making nuanced points that may be misunderstood by teenagers. However, that can be said about anybody and everything. Every opinion online can be misunderstood by children. Trying to protect children from the internet is a very interesting subject in and of itself because I would argue that 80% of the content on the internet is, can be negative or detrimental to a young mind that doesn't understand the world. Yeah. I'd argue that all of it. We just talked about music videos and dancing on the devil and, Listen, and I mean, all this stuff. I all think, this stuff is dangerous. By the way, I think you make a very good point on that. So, a lot of these rap stars, the lyrics, the videos... I think, far exceed anything that you've been accused of doing. Completely. Because in a lot of cases, some of them promote non-consensual activity with people, right? And I just think that crosses a line you have, as far as I've seen, you haven't crossed that line. No, I haven't. And, I, and this is the thing. And I've been vilified, not because of the things I say, because much more extremist content already exists on the internet. I think the reason I've been attacked and vilified is because of the popularity, because I became so massively famous, not mm. because of what I was actually saying. So as a professional, I analyze that and I understand that, okay, I'm massively famous now and certain things have been taken out of context. However, I still do believe I'm a force for good in the world.